uh, so Dio, just tell us a bit about who Dio is, where Dio works, and how Dio's company has revolutionized the payments industry through open APIs. Okay, um, so my name is Dio. Um, I lead the customer success team at Okra. Um, Okra is an open finance provider providing the infrastructure that um, fintechs would use in scaling um, the operations in Nigeria. Um, our mission as a company really is to commit to, to connect about 10 million Nigerians to the global economy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I think we're almost there. <laughs> wow, that's bold. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. That's bold. Um, how we are actually revolutionizing um, access to financial data. So before now, um, when businesses wanted to get access to um, information, it's probably involved a lot of um, manual processes, um, reaching out to the banks directly to get this information. But what we've done is we've actually um, created APIs that um, businesses can leverage and get direct access to the customer's um, financial information with the consent of the customer as well. Cool. That's good to hear. Yeah. And I think a couple of very interesting use cases have also opened up on the back of um, having access to open APIs as provided by Okra. Um, we see the proliferation of a lot of digital apps, um, finance advisory apps, budgeting apps, all of which yeah. um, are leveraged and built on the availability of open APIs. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah. sure. That's, that's great. Um, so I'm just gonna, we're just going to have a chat, but like, I'll be asking you a few questions and then uh, we can talk through what you think about those. Um, so first thing is how are open APIs revolutionizing the payments ecosystem by enabling seamless transactions and fostering innovation in financial services? Um, so in terms of payments, right, um, before now, um, even till now, um, just looking at how transactions are um, facilitated in Nigeria, it used to be very cash heavy. People yeah. naturally would want to pay for any service or a product, right, with the use of cash. Sure. Um, with the, um, the, the um, what's it called? With open APIs right now, what you see is a lot of payments um, are now facilitated digitally. Now you have people paying by bank transfers, you have people paying by USSD, you have people paying um, by account to account, which is what um, Okra is paranoid in Nigeria currently. You also even have people trying to pay with um, use of the blockchain. Yeah. So um, in recent times, um, open APIs have really changed how people um, start and end the transaction. Um, payments are now more digital. The adoption in itself also is quite impressive. Um, just looking at the cash crunch that happened in Q1 in Nigeria, oh. you did see a lot of um, a lot of dependence on the digital channels, yeah. right? You could see that there is a lot of demand in itself. What we actually are missing in Nigeria is the supply to actually handle the demand right. for yes. the populace to go digital. So yeah, um, just leveraging open um, open APIs. I think there is a lot of opportunities out there to layer payments and to actually get um, um, financial access to a lot of um, enough Nigerians. Cool. So now we have like a lot more of for payments, especially digital payments. Yes, yes, yes. So you we have do. many options to pay me. Yeah. After true, this. True. Yeah, that's good. And then a lot more options are actually coming up as well. Yeah. Um, before, what people have is the typical do a transfer from your banking app, mm -hmm. um, pay with your card, yeah. new USSD. Um, Okra is championing account to account. So yeah. um, all of the intermediaries that you typically would encounter in a traditional card payment. Those intermediaries are removed. Nice. The transaction fees are a lot smaller. So for yeah. merchants that are, are throwing in a lot of volume yes. of transaction, the cost of actually facilitating a payment is a lot smaller when you do account-to-account -account payments, that, yeah. which is what Okra is also pioneering now. Great. And it also means that um, payments are also a lot more reliable because of this. Yes, yes, yes. Um, just even looking at the evolution of payments in Nigeria, um, just in terms of the security protocols, um, the, term, the, the, the sort of encryptions, the, the uh, multi-factor authentication, um, all of this where we need to see them present themselves in payments now. Yeah. So um, payments are a lot more secure than yeah. they were in the beginning. And um, there is the blockchain as well. And you know mm -hmm. what? Um, there is a promise of blockchain blockchain being a lot more even secure than the traditional um, channels for facilitating payments. So sure. yeah, in, in, in recent times, there's been a lot of evolution on the security side. And yeah, yeah it's only going to get better from here. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Um, but then what are the key benefits for businesses and also consumers? I think we mentioned a few, but 
Uh, but what are the key benefits for business and customers and consumers in adopting open APIs for payments? And how can organizations effectively leverage those benefits? Um, I think some of the opportunities for businesses, um, largely I would want to categorize them um, across two lines, okay. um, scaling, um, scaling and um, range. Um, so I would give an, uh, give an instance. Um, businesses in themselves can leverage uh, multiple or payment of open APIs um, to scale their operations a lot faster than they would if they went through the traditional channels. Um, you could provide customers um, a more seamless experience in both the onboarding and the payment flows by just leveraging open APIs. Okay. Um, in terms of even range, um, Open APIs cut across even the finance service industry it actually even trickles down to social media. Yeah. You can forecast the customer's behavior just off of um, how they interact on social media, how mm -hmm. they spend from their bank account. So you can tailor solutions to that customer, give customers a more personalized experience, which naturally would increase customer stickiness and reduce bounce. Yeah. So yeah, there are a lot of opportunities that businesses can leverage on the customer side as well. Um, every customer is looking for the most convenient option right. when they want to go through a flow. They yeah. don't want to go through multiple screens when you're trying to effect a payment. They don't want to um, be bogged down with too many um, forms to many um, restrictions, right? So if the customer is getting the least number of screens, the least number of restrictions, and the payments are completed in milliseconds, that sort of customer is a repeat customer. And ultimately, yeah. is your pioneer that would sing your praises out in the market. So yeah, yeah there's a lot that businesses and the consumer and themselves want from open um, the availability of open APIs. And yeah, like I said, we're seeing a lot more acceptance. We're seeing a lot more depth. The ecosystem is opening up and we're actually seeing people naturally want to do more with, with open APIs. Cool, nice. And um, you mentioned um, a pay with bank um, type of option um, earlier. Oh yeah, the account to account. Yeah, um, account, yeah. So, um, so how does it work? I want to pay someone for something. Um, are you saying I no longer have to go over to my bank app, do the transfer, hope it goes through, and then wait for like a response to come back and all that? Are you saying I can do it within the flow of like if I'm paying another merchant? Correct. Um, so the typical flow currently is you want to make a payment, right? When you get to the checkout screen, what you see is pay with bank, pay with your card, right? Now, if you click on pay with card, you are naturally um, given an account number. Yeah. So the expectation is you exit that platform, go yeah. to your bank app, um, complete okay. the transaction, come back, back, click on a confirmation yeah. um, link, and wait until that confirmation is done. Mm -hmm. But um, on the account to account side, um, because we're, um, we're facilitating a direct connection yeah. within the app or within that platform. So when you get to the checkout screen and you see options like pay with Okra, when you click on that, you actually get within the app experience or between the web experience, your yeah. um, banking option opens up. You nice. enter your username, your password, wow. you enter your OTP as is redirected, you see the amount you're about to pay, you yeah. put all of the security um, um, options you have on their account, and the transaction goes. So you're not waiting to confirm, yeah. which is a longer um, time you spend on the flow. You're not waiting to confirm. You are also not exiting the app and yeah. trying to come back in from where you stopped. So it's like start to finish, everything can be facilitated in one flow. Yeah. And the screens are probably just two yeah. in, this, in, this, in this flow. But yeah. yeah. So, like, so thanks to Open APIs, we have faster, we have like, we have faster payments, we have easier payments. I mean, yeah, and the customer experience is yeah, a lot more better seamless. experiences. Yeah. Nice, nice. And um, in what ways can Open APIs drive the embedding of financial services within various industries? Um, such as retail, e-commerce, and travel, you know, what opportunities does this kind of integration present? Yeah, so the opportunities are actually a lot, um, but what we see typically now in the market is there is a lot of demand on the onboarding side. Yeah. So um, people or a lot of merchants naturally want to get KYC information from either the BVNs, the NINs, the um, new brand accounts of, 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 of the, the clients. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm Even the phone numbers, Yep. In some instances, um, because of because they are data banks that warehouse KYC information using all any of these um, parameters, what Open API does is they when you went as on the customer journey, the customer imputes any of these yeah. um, wherever the data is domiciled, you can easily pull that and return that information, um, um, and that yeah. pretty much 
um, is an onboarding flow in itself. itself yes. So the traditional routes of um, uploading this, uploading that is eliminated because um, it is expected that the regulatory bodies have up-to-date and accurate information about every citizen of Nigeria. Yeah. Now, outside of the onboarding flow, you also have the payments flow in itself, which yep. I actually just described. Um, again, the traditional methods of paying with cards, paying by transfers, um, you, and you have account-to-account -account payments in itself. It's a cheaper option as well. I yep. think I didn't mention that. Um, because when you're facilitating a payment with cards, you have like four intermediaries, right? Yes, you have true. the processor, you have the gateway, you have the bank, uh, you have yeah. the card. Everybody, everybody gets a chunk of, of, yeah. of fees off of a payment when you're facilitating it. Definitely. And these fees in themselves are within the range of 1% and in some countries up to 3%. Whoa. But when you're facilitating a payment on the account to account side, however, it's a fraction, usually between 0 0.6 and in very, very, very expensive instances yeah. up to one. But in Nigeria, it's really not that expensive yeah. as well. So um, we see merchants, and we also see merchants want to make use of data science um, of data science products. So yeah. there is a lot of data that you can analyze from a person's bank statement. You can somehow um, posit where this person, how this person spends this person's income. Um, is this person a heavy eater? Is this person a heavy drinker? Is this person <laughs> a club animal? You can tell all of this from a person's bank statement by just saying, who are they constantly paying Thank money you. to, right? Or yeah. oh, this person is a family man. He's always paying school fees every three business <laughs> days, you know? You can pull all of this information from a person's bank statement. And yeah. in doing that in itself, you can tailor solutions that speak to that person directly. Yeah. So if the person is a heavy, he probably pays a lot of bills, you can tailor on the merchant side, you know what, can I offer this person buy now pay later solutions, just yeah. looking at how they spend yeah. and looking at how much they earn, how much can I give to them in real time. Um, if this person is spending too much on um, Pedro Palace casinos, you know what, give this person casino points so the guy yeah. keeps coming to the casino. You can do all of this from just analyzing the bank data of, 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 this, of, person. of, of this person. So yeah, um, there's a lot that you can do with, with, with bank data. There's a lot that there, again, there are a lot of innovative use cases that will still come up on the back of usage of, of, yeah. the, of the customer's like, bank data. I already hear so many interesting, like possible use cases. Yes, yes. And we so do many. see a lot of interesting use cases in Oprah. Yeah. I can imagine like, so for example, an e-commerce site on board you and like, oh, based on your spend history, you're always buying pampas. So you know what? These are the best yes, selling pampers. These are the best selling pampers. These yeah. are the cheaper pampers. These are, these are the ones. discounts you can get on, on, on yeah. pampers. Even on the travel side, um, if I see that you're constantly traveling, I'm, I'm on the on the social media side, you're sending you ads of all of exactly. the discounts from the different airlines to tell you that you know what, you can make savings here, you can make savings there. On the e-commerce side as well, if I know you like to buy and I know like you're buying, say, $10,000 worth of clothes in a month. I can yeah. tell you, you know what, you can do $12,000 worth of clothes. I'll give you 2,000 on a loan. Yeah. You can pay me back over exactly. a period of time. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot that um, businesses can do with open APIs and the data that's available to them. Nice, so if I, if I integrate with Okra, my app will look very smart. Yes, 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 and very agile as well. <laughs> Good. And um, let's talk about security and privacy for a bit, because I know this is usually a concern that comes up with many people. Ah, you mean I will enter my bank information inside this other app, or more, they will not come and steal my money. I'll just be seeing debits. You know? So let's talk about security and privacy for a bit. So how can organizations ensure the security and privacy of customer data while implementing open APIs and facilitating the exchange of financial information? So um, when customers, when merchants typically want to implement any form of open banking or open um, API um, um, initiative in their flows, right, it is very important that they also understand what best practice is and yeah. what data privacy is. Sure. Um, naturally, there is always an authentication and an authorization yes. flow before the entire process starts. So um, in terms of just handling security, emphasis has to be on that authentication and authorization flows. Um, there also has to be a lot of um, secure encryption end-to-end -end while yeah. the data is at rest or in transit. Yeah. Um, the end-to-end -end encryption has to be um, 
again, has to be one of the best or in terms of that, what, what should confirm at least the global best practices. Yeah. Um, also, there has to be like a secure key management system in place. Yeah. Are you rolling out two FAs? Are you rolling MFAs, yeah. right? Um, are you throwing out uh, tokens as well yeah. to, the, to the customers to ensure that when they go through this flow, um, their security, they have some level of comforts that outside of what I'm entering here, right? Um, my information will not be stolen. Also, the customers also need to be given the, con the, the visibility um, to know that at any point in time, if they choose to want to disconnect from your platform, yeah, they important. have a platform to do that. I think one thing we've also seen in Nigeria is the skepticism of the um, consumer is on the part of if I give you this data, how long am I giving it to you for? Yeah. If I want to revoke it, what are the routes I can yeah. go? This is not information that a lot of merchants put out there, mm -hmm. which on the regulatory front, they actually should put out there. Customers uh, should know that, you know what, if you're giving me your data now, um, there is a platform where you can disconnect your account okay. and um, revoke access to this data um, that you're giving to me. Yeah. So I think there's a lot that has to be done on the education side around security. Um, but the merchants um, also on their end have to invest a lot in security and confirm to standards. With the open um, banking guidelines in Nigeria now, some of the security, minimum security standards are yeah. actually um, prescribed there. So oh, a lot okay. of merchants are also expected to confirm to those security standards. Yeah, so um, I think I like the fact that um, it sounds like for you who's working with businesses to power these experiences, you also like to a very good degree sort out that side of things that yeah. that's whole you know regulatory and those things because you already make sure that those companies comply yes with yes, um, yes, this yes. with this best yeah. practices cool cool nice and um so what role do partnerships and collaborations play in maximizing the potential of like open apis in general you know how can organizations effectively just collaborate to deliver enhanced customer experiences um, so in terms of collaborations, right, um, because the data bank most times are big institutions, the big corporates like the banks, yeah. um, the government agencies, agencies sometimes. Yeah. Um, before now, I think the body language or the posture has been one of you guys are my competitors, yeah, right? Um, course, we're not in this journey together. Yeah, you yeah. guys are just coming to poach. Um, on the limited market range that I have. Yeah. But what has happened in recent times is businesses now, on, on the banks, um, the regulatory institutions now understand that, you know what, what we're doing now is not scalable, right? Yeah. A lot of in innovation can come into this space yeah. if we collaborate with some of these fintechs and some of these open API providers. Um, our customers can have a more um, seamless experience. Yes. Our customers can... Um, have access to more than what we are giving to them currently. Mm -hmm. So it's not uncommon nowadays to see the banks opening up their APIs to fintechs yeah, yeah, yeah. and telling them, you know what, come and connect. Um, it's also a revenue stream for them as well because, again, the closed-minded way of reviewing or thinking about this um, mm -hmm. did not open up a few minds to the possibilities of what could have been. But what we have now is collaborations are quite key. It's not also uncommon to see, um, take for example an Uber, and Uber uses one API for identity verification. It uses another yeah. API for payments. It uses yeah. another API for um, just uh, managing the restaurant side of Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of apps in Nigeria, it's still an evolution really, it's yeah. quite, quite early stages, but you're beginning to see plugins between two institutions, um, yeah. pulling data, interacting mm -hmm. with data um, on a back and forth um, basis. But um, yeah, there is a place for collaboration. Colla again, it's a very it's a young ecosystem. Um, the roadmap to collaboration is still very yeah, long. Yeah, um, and yeah, I think in coming years, even um, in the next two, three years, we see a lot more collaborations than what we're having now. But the good thing is that on the big merchant side, which is on the bank side, on the regulator side, on the um, government institution side, there's a bit more open-mindedness on, on the subject yeah. of collaboration. Yeah, good. So like a subtle benefit that open APIs have brought to what I say the ecosystem is that it has helped to foster collaboration between like startups, financial institutions, yeah. government agencies, and you just bring everybody together. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're going through certain flows. You enter your a wrong, um, what's it called, vehicle registration number. And you're seeing 
this registration number is invalid and you're right. like, oh, okay, somebody has been here. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. yeah, so you see a lot of those, um, those coming up. And as people are innovating and interesting use cases are coming up, um, some of these use cases are not um, insular in themselves. They naturally would require a lot of collaborations across boards. Oh, great, great. I think I have just one final question. And, okay. Um, we'll be out of here. And so looking ahead, what are the emerging trends and future possibilities for open APIs in payments, in financial services, retail, travel, you know, all these industries? Um, how can organizations stay ahead of the curve? Um, I think um, because of how young um, the fintech industry is in Nigeria, because of how large the unbanked population is in Nigeria, yeah. um, because of how limited the range of financial products are in Nigeria, sure. there is a lot that can still be done. There is a lot of innovation that can still happen. Yeah. There is a lot of disruptions that can still come into the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, in that in itself presents an opportunity for businesses, for new, for emerging fintechs. In Okra, we believe that the the next generation of fintechs that would do some serious disruption in Nigeria is not even yet born. It's probably yeah. still an idea. It's probably still um, exactly. at, at, at um, what's it called, at deck stage Actually. stages right now. Um, because there is a lot. We have the population. We have, um, we have the, the data. Though some of these yeah. data are quite old, there might just need some um, adapter um, mid-level layers to connect those yeah. obsolete and not obsolete but those older platforms Old and the newer platforms yeah. um, but that in itself there is a lot that can be done um, in terms of trends that um, businesses can actually um, leverage to stay ahead of the curve um, I think a lot of businesses also shouldn't just sit and say you know what because we are um, number one today, right? There's no need to innovate. Mm -hmm. Innovation is very important. Um, in Nigeria as well, we think a lot of businesses, just on the awkward side, and just even seeing how um, some of these use cases are coming, we also think that a lot of existing businesses should research, to invest heavily in research and development. Yep. We don't really research, we research. We just sure. wait for that one person to do something. Oh, he's making a lot of money. Everybody starts just doing do, this. Yeah. So um, I think it's quite important that we invest a lot in research and development. We also adopt a very agile um, framework we should be, fun businesses should be fungible, right? Yeah. Not rigid. Um, be open to trying out new things. Be open to engaging with the new um, entrance into the market. Just, just get ahead of what's going on. Yeah. And um, yeah, not be afraid to try because sure. anything is possible, really. Yeah, anything is possible. Anything yeah. is possible. I have seen like interesting, like credit companies being able to make faster decisions, yeah. more seamless onboarding across, like across industries, more tailored experiences. So like, I know there's a lot more to come. Our ecosystem is still young. And um, yeah, we look forward to all the beautiful things that Open APIs will still power. Yeah, we are here yeah. about Okra. We are cheering Okra on as well, because I know you're in front of that. So. Yes, yes, yes. All the best in that.